Hi, I'm Dick Collins. When heading to the mountains or over the mountains, one of the first considerations is density altitude. This is especially true in the months when we're most likely to head for the hills, the summer months, when it's warm. Consideration of density altitude relates to takeoff and climb performance as well as to en route terrain clearance. Remember that service ceiling number in the book is based on standard conditions. If it is warmer than standard, the airplane won't make it to that number on the altimeter. Look at it this way. The service ceiling, as published, is the highest density altitude to which the airplane will climb. If the temperature at 10,000 feet is 20 degrees C above standard, a not unlikely happening in the summer and fall, the density altitude is very close to the service ceiling of an airplane like a Skyhawk or a Warrior. The main point is that before doing any mountain flying, best compare the forecast temperature aloft with standard and know in advance what performance should be available. Sure, we go to the mountains in the wintertime too for skiing or business or sometimes just for the scenery, but in the cold time of year, density altitude isn't so much of a problem, especially if you have a hot performer like the Avanti. In the wintertime, a mountain challenge can come from strong wind flowing over the rough terrain and the corresponding turbulence and up and down drafts. Two, most of us think in terms of mountain flying as being in the west, but the mountains in the center of the country, Mount Magazine in Arkansas is highest there at 2,753 feet above sea level, and in the east, where Mount Mitchell is at 6,684 feet, can be very much a factor when the wind is blowing. It's really the height of a mountain from its base to its top that matters when the wind is blowing. And in this regard, Mount Mitchell and the other high mountains of the east are as big as some of the mountains of the Rockies. Let me tell you a war story about wind and mountains and turbulence. I was at Asheville, North Carolina, not far from Mount Mitchell. The airport is about 4,400 feet lower than Mount Mitchell's peak. It was March, and the surface wind was gusting over 35 knots out of the northwest. I was headed northeast in my P-210. Our son was there in a new King Air, and he was headed northwest. We both left and flew to our destination. He called that night and regaled me with tales of the rough ride he had climbing out of Asheville and asked me how we fared in my much lighter airplane. Actually, my ride wasn't bad for one reason. I've been flying to the Asheville area for over 40 years, and I know where the really bad bumps are when the wind blows. They are always directly related to the wind direction in relation to the orientation of the mountain ridges, and are much worse on the leeward side of the ridges. When I left, I flew straight east for a while to stay much farther away from Mount Mitchell than a straight line would have taken me. I also watched and avoided the more torn up looking clouds. My son just headed out, direct over mountains almost as high as Mount Mitchell, but then he didn't have as much choice as I did. Had I been headed northwest, though, I'd have gone straight north to get out of the mountains as soon as possible and to put as much distance as possible between my airplane and the high mountains to the west. When wind is perpendicular to ridges and you're flying in the valley, the best deal is to stay as far from the leeward side of the ridges as possible. The air on the windward side is likely a lot smoother. So, planning a route in the mountains when it's windy is just as important as planning around density altitude when it's hot. Just visualize the flow over the mountains and you can see where the air will roll and tumble. Do be aware, too, that in mountain passes, wind velocity increases, often dramatically, due to Venturi effect. Let me back up and add something. I just said that we took off at Asheville with the wind gusting over 35 knots. Later on, I'm going to tell you that the guideline for maximum wind at ridge level is 25 knots, or in some cases, 30 knots. Those guidelines are good and are related to both performance and turbulence. Leaving Asheville, I was headed over relatively low terrain and was staying away from the bigger mountains because the wind exceeded that guideline. There are many places near Mount Mitchell I wouldn't go on a day like that. My son was flying a deep breathing twin turboprop at a light operating weight and had plenty of rate of climb to get quickly above the mountains, even though he did get beat up. Up and down drafts can be a big factor in operations over and near mountains, and these have to be evaluated and dealt with. 
In one extreme case that I know of, a light twin that was flying down an airway on the leeward side of Mount Mitchell on an active day, 2,400 feet above the peak, got in a downdraft that exceeded the performance capability of the airplane. The pilot stayed in the downdraft until the airplane hit the terrain. When you encounter a downdraft in the mountains, you better know which way to turn to go toward lower terrain or to trade that downdraft for an updraft, or at least for less of a downdraft. The best you can do with the airplane is apply maximum continuous power and fly at the best rate of climb airspeed. Also, recognize that up and downdrafts exist at altitudes a lot higher than the ridge level, and what may seem adequate terrain clearance can go away in a hurry. My P-210 can operate at altitudes four times as high as most of the ridges in the east, yet it is often affected by up and down drafts at crews in the low 20s. On one route I fly often, Hagerstown, Maryland to Asheville, North Carolina, any strong northwest wind runs perpendicular to the ridges that are present upwind of and under most of the flight. The down drafts can often cause the loss of 20 or more knots of airspeed. If flying along in a downdraft, what might change to get you out of the downdraft? Nothing might change of its own accord because this route is parallel to the ridges. What I have done many times is ask the controller if I can offset my route five miles to the left or to the right to see if I can get in an updraft that will persevere for a while. This usually works great and gives a true airspeed bonus for much of the flight. Finally, for the arrival at Asheville, I compare the wind aloft with Mount Mitchell and plan a route in that is on the windward side of the mountain. I'll always remember arriving one day with a strong southeasterly flow, an unusual condition, and having to reverse my usual procedure and go east of the mountains. Seeing the clouds tumbling down over on the west side of the mountains gave a very clear picture of a bad place to be.